Let's start with the prayer together. Heavenly Father, Divine Mother, Friend, Beloved God, Guru Preceptors, Jesus Christ, Babaji Krishna, Lahiri Mahashaya, Swami Sri Yukteswarji, Beloved Guru Deva, Paramahansa Yogananda Ji, Saints of all religions, we bow at thy feet. Thank you for these great teachings. Thank you for thy presence, thy protection, thy love and joy in our lives. Om Shanti, Shanti. <clears throat> it's a joy to greet you all this evening. And I'd like to start by saying I'm not an astrologer. and <laughs> I never have been. But I would like to highlight some of the things Master uh, and Swami Sri Tesraji said about the astrological bangles. So first off, I'll start with uh, a brief quote from autobiography. Swami Sri Tesraji has just convinced Master to get a bangle, astrological bangle. He says, Master is saying, sir, of course I shall take your advice and get a bangle. I am intrigued at the thought of outwitting a planet. For general purposes, I counsel the use of an armlet made of gold, silver, and copper. But for specific purposes, I want you to get one of silver and lead. The stars are about to take an unfriendly interest in you, Makunda. Fear not, you shall be protected. In about a month, your liver will cause you much trouble. The illness is scheduled to last for six months, but your use of an astrological armlet will shorten the period to 24 days. I sought out a jeweler the next day and was soon wearing the bangle. My health was excellent. Master's prediction slipped from my mind. 30 days after our conversation, I felt a sudden pain in the region of my liver. The following weeks were a nightmare of excruciating pain. And he goes on to tell that whole story in the book. With the bangle and his guru's blessings, Master, as you know from the story, Makunda was healed. And he says, I wear even now the heavy silver and lead bangle, a memento of that day. So how important is it to have an astrological bangle and to use them. Well, Master said the best bangle is devotion. A wonderful statement. Um, and if we can have that much devotion, we don't need a bangle. But I saw a picture, the picture we put on the for this class, where he had on a bangle, it seemingly looked like on both arms. Maybe it was just one, but for sure he had the bangle on and he said he wore it. And then he says to Swami Sri Teswarji, after he explains to him that God alone is the best bangle and devotion is, the master says, then, dear master, why do you want me to wear an astrological bangle? Such a beautiful answer it is. Swami Sri Teswarji says, it is only when a traveler has reached his goal that he is justified in discarding his maps. During the journey, he takes advantage of any convenient shortcut. The ancient rishis discovered many ways to curtail the period of man's exile and delusion. There are certain mechanical features in the law of karma, which can be skillfully adjusted by the fingers of wisdom. And so we know Master wore uh, bangles. We know Swami Sri Teswarji recommended bangles to his students, to disciples, to the friends of uh, disciples. And Master said invariably when he brought people to Swami Sri Teswarji, just as friends, Swami Sri Teswarji recommended that they get a bangle or a gem. And you know the story, uh, there are fabulous stories in autobiography of uh, Dr. Roy, who was a friend of uh, the father of one of the disciples' friends. And, and Swami Sri Teswarji says, why bring a dead man to the ashram when they had brought him to visit him? And, and the fellows said, well, he's very much alive. He said, but he will be dead in six months. He has uh, diabetes. 
and he will die. But if he gets a bangle, he'll live, but he won't want to get a bangle. He was a horse doctor. He said he'll just be just as stubborn as his horses and he won't get a bangle. He said in six months, he'll drop dead. Exactly, that's what happened. And Sashi and the three sapphires, Swami Sri Teswarji told him to get them and he said, Master, why do I need that if I have you? He said, Sashi, in one year, you're going to come crawling here with those sapphires. <laughs> and they would be of no use then. And Sashi didn't get them, but he did come in one year crawling to Swami Sri Teswarji. He said, I don't, told Makunda, I don't want to see him. But anyway, he healed Sashi for whatever reason, and Sashi did live. Uh, we know Swamiji wore a bangle and he wore Navaratna. And interestingly enough, Swamiji said that um, there was a diamond that he had in his Navaratna that cracked at a particular time. And that happened here in India near the last years of Swamiji's life. And Swamiji said, interestingly enough, this is the karma of Ananda. You know, so he was, he was also protecting the work through the gemstones that he wore. And also we have, you know, most of the people who I know have been at Ananda for decades, all wear a, all have a bangle. Some have a Navaratna or some gemstones were on the fingers or on the arm or a bracelet or whatever, but depend, it has nothing to do with how long you've been on the path. People have taken Swami Shri Teswarji's and master's advice and have gotten a bangle. So what does a bangle do? It's like an umbrella in the rain. If you're in the rain, you're getting wet because you have no umbrella. You open up that umbrella and you just don't get as wet. Karma doesn't hit you as much, or you may be ill and it goes away faster, or you're completely spared from some problem that could come up. It's like karma's coming, but it hits the outside. It doesn't, it doesn't hit, hit and uh, go in deep into your aura. Now we know energization, Kriya, Hongsa, Mahamudra, Guru Kripa, attunement, chanting, all of these things are protecting us. Every day they're protecting us. But as Swami Sri Teswarji says, take all the help you can get uh, until you've realized God. Now my uh, bangles came, my bangle and my uh, Navaratna both came just when I needed them. And they were both gifts. One was a gift from Ananda community when I was going to serve in Italy. I was there seven years traveling all around helping that work. And it was a wonderful thing that I had a bangle. The other came when I came first was as soon as I got to India. I got, I got a Navaratna, full Navaratna given as a gift. And I was, I've been on the road ever since for 18 years. And so I think these things also come when Divine Mother uh, wants it to happen and you really need it and finally I'll end with this how they work uh, bangles and gemstones work from uh, autobiography ages ago our yogis Swami Sri Teswarji saying discovered that pure metals emit an astral light which is powerfully counteractive to negative pulls of the planets Subtle electrical and magnetic radiations are constantly circling in the universe. When a man's body is being aided, he does not know it. When it's being disintegrated, he still does know he is still in ignorance. Can he do anything about it? Our rishis found helpful not only a combination of metals, but also of plants and most effective of all, faultless jewels of not less than two carats worn uh, with the right weight and worn next to the skin, against the skin. So if you're considering getting a bangle or a gemstone or Navaratna, uh, if and when you feel uh, that you would like to have one, pursue getting one, please talk to your local center leader to get more details, more information where you might get one. So let's close now. Um, by sending prayers out. Let's inhale and tense the body. Fill your body with energy. Exhale the stresses of the day, the tensions, worries, whatever. Inhale joy, energy, magnetism, God's grace and power. Exhale 
dump the body and all of its concerns. Once more, inhale. And exhale. Now fill your body with light. Sit straight, close your eyes, gaze up at the spiritual eye, and imagine a swirling light going around your body, making your aura bigger and stronger, master's power coming into you, strengthening you, banishing karma, banishing difficulties, worries, doubts, fears. Feel yourself being blessed now by all of the gurus with your devotion, your openness and receptivity, and feel yourself as their channel of light, of blessings, of grace, of power, upliftment, going out to the whole world. Visualize the light of God and gurus as we now think of this world filled with light, surrounded and circled in light, that all darkness can ban be banished, that all thoughts that are holding people back from upliftment, from light, from joy, are diminished, that our energy and focus, prayer, can help alleviate the pains and sufferings of nations at war, of people, of all places suffering in any ways, physically, mentally, spiritually, to see a light going around the globe from God and gurus. And rub your hands together now. Keep feeling that the masters are pouring energy and light into you. Now it's in your arms and in your hands, at your spiritual eye. And let us offer a prayer of light and blessings for the whole world. See it encircled, enveloped, with light as we chant Om together now. Om. Om. Once more. Om. See your hands as magnets. You might see one as master and one as Babaji. As Swamiji said, it's not my work, it's not your work, it's Babaji and master's work. See yourself as their channel, instrument of light and blessings in this world, now and always. Om Shanti, Shanti.